Okay, miniature cannon build. I've uh, purchased this lump of brass bar, so it's 50mm diameter, 300mm long. And first job I'm going to do before I start turning it and boring it is to machine some trunnion ring holes and rings. So what I'm going to do, take the milling machine, I'll put a cutter in it in a minute, to actually start cutting the trunnions first and machining them in. Uh, the trunnions are for what the carriage holds the gun. So, so this being the muzzle end, I'm going to start machining the trunnion holes or protrusions about 160 mil in. That leaves 140 mil on the back. Uh, back of the cannon's heavier. Front of the cannon's lighter because the bigger holes. So it should be about there-ish. So we'll give that a try. We'll get the tooling in the milling machine. Miniature cannon uh, build, just decided to make one. So what I've done is I've purchased a 50mm diameter brass bar, 300mm long. Um, and what I'm doing now is I'm going to be machining some trunnion mounts. So what I'm going to do is machine in to the brass bar around about 7mm to take a pin. Um, going nowhere near the bore but, uh, so I'm using this drill but to demonstrate what size I'm going to machine out so to do that I've uh, centered the bar that way and I want the hole to be 163 millimeters in from the end of the muzzle so that's centered on that I've got a center drill now just going to bore it in and I'm going to take the 8mm drill bit just to go down about 6mm then I'm going to take the milling bit it's a, I think it's an 11mm I'm going to go in and then I'm going to use the rotary table to physically turn out my hole then on the, when I've made the hole I'm going to go to the outside to turn a bigger mount then round the outside a little bit unorthodox in how to hold it but that seems to be the best way of uh, gripping this, I've put some blue paper underneath. So this is uh, going to take a bite on the rotary table. Um, so next part, you'll hopefully see me halfway through machining. Okay, that's my hole drilled out and plunged to a depth of seven millimeters. So the hole I want uh, I want 15 millimeter diameter and I'm going to make this with 11 mil cutter so what I'll do is I'll take the end of the milling machine and move it two millimeters that way and then move this axis two millimeters this way so hopefully fingers crossed when I start turning this round it'll cut the hole two millimeters bigger diameter all the way around if it's not quite 15 mil, plus or minus whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm machining a pin to go into there anyway, so I'll just machine the size to suit. So once I've done that, I'll come to the outside and cut a ring like this all the way around. So it'll look like the whole lot's been cast in one piece. So yeah, next stage, hopefully you'll see the first one complete. That's my 8mm hole cut in there with that and then I plunged the cutting tool in 7mm. So what I'm going to do now is I want, this is an 11mm diameter, so I want to make a 15mm diameter hole there or thereabouts. So what I'll do is I'll set the zero on this to the centre of that hole. So what I'll do is I'll wind this in two millimetres to move this over and I'll use the rotary table to wind this round and cut the 15 millimetre hole. That's the hole milled out to 15 mil exactly. Um, what I did then before I took it out, the uh, cutter, I milled that nice and flat. And the reason I want that is the trunnion will sit out 
and the top of this will be flat and I'm going to now mill around the outside of this. I'll put a smaller cutter in, there's no need for the big one. Um, I've milled enough out just to get enough of a lip there because that's the diameter I want it. So 7mm deep, 15mm wide, I'll make a pin to go in the end that'll sit in the trolley and that'll I'll probably make the pin a little bit wider just so it sits hard too and then flush hard down and lock tight it in. So now I'll take the cutter back to centre, move it out, probably leave, I'll measure that first. It's about two and a half mil. So I'll move the cutter, the outside face of the cutter, two and a half mil past. Probably do three first for the first cut, go round, then keep coming in till it's just kissing there. And then I'll go down, oh, couple of mil just to give it a little bit of a step then I'll that's that finished then I'll repeat the process for the other side then it's into the lathe for turning and that's a five mil cutter then run around the outside like I said so you'll maybe see what's starting to take shape now so when the pin goes in that it'll pivot and what I can do then is I can this end tapers down towards the muzzle. It's going to get thinner and thinner and thinner. Narrow diameter, should I say. And this one will slowly rise up to nearly full thickness here. So there'll be a slight taper on that. It's about a degree and a half I'm doing. Maybe two. We'll see what looks best. Before I repeat the process on this side, I've just uh, drilled a centre hole. What I did before I took the bar out is a wee bit unconventional again, but hey, put a set square in the end and clamped it down so I know this is as hard to this goes, so I don't need to measure to the centre of the hole. And then for the bar being you know, left and right, what I did there is I put another bit of steel in the back and clamped it down so then it sits hard too. And finally, how do I know that this hole is 180 degrees opposite the other hole. So because I machined some flats on the underside, what I did then is I just put two bits of uh, three mil thick plate steel so that makes it sit flat and then I shimmed the ends up to match so they were dead tight. So I clamp it down so everything's drum tight now. So this will be exactly 180 degrees from the other half. So I can take these uh, well, the set square off just now. I can leave that clamp in the back. It's not doing any harm just now. So I'll do exactly what I did before. I'll plunge this drill bit in, the 7mm. I'll put the cutter in, mill it out to the 15mm, then the 5mm cutter all the way around. And that should complete the milling machine part of this. On to the lathe now. So, as you've seen in the previous sections, that's the trunnion mounts machined. Uh, what I've done this time is put it in the lathe, just grabbed it in the three jaw chuck, centred it with this and adjusted it so that I've got the smallest run out I can find. And why am I doing this? Well, I'm going to be trimming off the end, just giving it a little clean and taking a centre drill in the, the chuck just to drill a little 5mm hole in the end and this is to take the button that goes in the end of the cannon. So this is the muzzle end, this is the firing end or where you light your fuse etc. And the reason I'm not machining a button into this is I just want the cannon to look that little bit longer so I can make a little button and then I can machine a little ring into the, the button so it looks as though it's been cast all in one piece and the ring is for where if it was in a ship you would put the rope through so you could after it's fired you could pull them back in and fire again so if I machined the button into the this here it'd be very hard because I'm turning it to get a ring in it this way so what I'll do is I'll machine a button on its own out of a bit of uh, bar I've got there then I can mill a little slot in it and put a brass ring in it and silver solder the brass ring in then Tap this out to 6mm, put a little bit of uh, threaded bar in, spin it in so the ring is straight up and when it's in there I can lock tight it in position so there's 
grooves and shapes going on the end of this anyway. So hopefully look as though it's one piece when I'm finished. So got running within well, microns really. Um, so there's only a tiny little bit of movement in that. So five micron or something when it, on a full rotation. So I think the ovality is slightly in the bar rather than me getting it centre because no matter what I do, it, the high spot's always in the same position. So I'm turning it down anyway, it's not a problem, but as long as I get this hole in the centre. Once I've centred it, drilled it, cleaned the end up a bit, I'll spin it round and then start machining uh, ready for drilling the hole. Took the centre drill, little hole in the end, then drilled it 10mm deep with the 5mm drill bit because I'm going to thread that to 6mm. And what I decided, because there's a slight uh, ovality in the bar here, um, what I did is I took the lathe tool and turned just a half a millimetre off the bar and yes, you could see the ovality in it when I was turning it, so that's it. Turned down. I uh, took some sandpaper with a little bit of uh, diesel in it just to give it that little polish. Um, just so when I grab it in the chuck on this side, when I spin it round, hopefully it'll be as centred as possible. So, turn the end down of the bar. Uh, the decision to turn this down that little bit to centre it uh, worked out very well. Very, very little movement in the bar now. So I centre drilled the end again. Uh, next stage is to drill it out. Uh, so what I'm going to do is in very uh, little steps. Um, uh, the finished bore size is going to be 15.5mm, round about that, 156 I'm um, intending making the bore to fit a 15mm uh, bearing. So I want that half millimetre clearance for the wadding down the cannon bore. So I'm going to start off with a 12mm drill bit. Um, I'll sink that in probably about 40 millimetres. And what I'll do then is that's in preparation for this long 250mm drill bit. So you'll see there that'll go in most of the way. Not quite enough, but uh, you'll see why in a second. So before I do that, I want to make sure it is central so I don't start poking out. Or So what I'll do then is I'll take this tool and because that drill bit I'm starting off with is 12mm, I'll use this tool to go in and get an accurate cut in that 40 millimetres. Uh, so it's a dead size for this drill bit to fit, so the drill bit isn't going in and chattering side to side. So the drill bit will then guide itself in, because it's got at least two flats of the flute holding it, or two or three probably at 40 millimetres, holding it central when I'm boring it. So as I'm boring it, I'll go in a couple of millimetres at a time, clear the swarf out with the air line, and just slowly nibble away with the 13 mil drill bit. Once I've done that, you'll see it in the various stages I'm going through. I'll then go back to this to take it out to 15mm again, so it'll centre this here. So I'll go in as far as I can with this tool uh, here. Um, and the reason for this is, purely down to the size of my lathe. The bed of the lathe isn't quite long enough because by the time I put this drill bit in here. Whoa! It's far too long. So I'll, I'll put about a 0.1 of a millimetre clearance on this drill bit so it doesn't catch. So when I slide the whole lot in I can start drilling from here and slowly punch my hole through to about there. And before I finish the end I'll round the end of the drill bit off so the bottom of the bore is rounded. Uh, this is great for drilling, but if I round it off it's not quite going to be as good a, or as easy to drill. Started the boring now out with the 13mm bit. 
Um, I'm not videoing the whole thing because it will take ages. It's going to take me probably an hour to get through this and then the bigger drill bit. And the reaming out worked perfectly. Uh, got within 0 0.02 of a millimetre just so it just centres itself just fine. There's absolutely no wobble in the drill bit. I'll uh, just start it up just to show you. In a second, if I turn the lathe on. So I've selected 300 RPM. Keep it nice and low for the uh, speed. No rush. Um, so, there we go. Absolutely perfect. So the airline works well so after I've drilled about two or three millimeters what I do is I back the drill out so that allows me to put air in one flute of the drill and the swarf comes out the other side so I just put my hand over it because it flies everywhere as you can see it's all over the place but it's working out fine so only another 200 mil to go then I'll swap with a bigger drill bit the 15 mil again I'll take the little boring bar. It's a wee bit too far out for its own good, but what I'm doing is I'm just going back and forth, back and forth, maybe a dozen times just to get the perfect size and just to take the, the tiniest little bits of swarf off just to make sure that bore is a perfect size and again, it's in alignment. So, here we go. Hopefully see you in an hour later, but with the wonders of video, it'll be about... Two seconds. Phase one of the drilling complete then, or so that's the thirteen mil drill in, into the full depth, which is about there. So we've got about another forty mil to go. So what I was quite surprised of is when you look at the drill, even though it's all centered and there's a tiny little bit of movement. I measured it as point two four of a millimeter movement back and forth. You can hear the chatter there, but quite surprised. So, next, like I said before, turn it out a little bit just to so the 15mm drill bit's a perfect fit. I'll have to machine it into about the 40mm just so I've got enough clearance to start the drilling. So, this did take about an hour. Uh, laterally, instead of going in you know, 2mm at a time, I had to go in a millimetre, back it out keep bumping the tailstock back and forth, back and forth to clean it and blowing it out with an airline. Um, but yeah, got there in the end. So the next stage with the 15mm drill but will be a lot, lot easier because the hole's already drilled. It's only going to be that last, like what I said, that last bit I'll have to keep clearing like I've been doing before. So, next stage. I thought the 15mm boring was going to be a lot easier because I'd already cut it out to 13 but boy was it hard, tough going. They kept choking and squeaking so I had to keep pulling the tailstock back and forth, back and forth. So eventually got there then shaped the end of the drill bit to a D like I said. The only reason I'm doing that is because the original large bore cannons were shaped like a D, probably down to the shape of drill bit they had at the time. That's it done, boring complete. All I've got to do now is ream it out but first of all I'll take the little boring bar on the end again and take it out to the finished size. So we've got somewhere to start with so that's about 15.5, 15.6 mil. 